There are so many tools in the miniature hobby space that it can be a bit overwhelming to get started. I've learnt along the way from testing a lot of products, some of them were good, some of them were very bad. So what I wanted to do today is walk through the various steps of painting a miniature, from building, through priming, painting, decals, basing, varnishing and also storage. And show you which tools that I think uh, should be included in your kit as a bare minimum and which tools will help you improve your painting or do it a lot faster. This video is aimed at beginners, but if you're trying to improve your workflow, it may be helpful for you as well. So let's start with the building process. What are the bare minimum things that you need? Firstly, a self-healing cutting mat will be a great help and also just give you a nice area to work in. Secondly, you want some good lighting. I have these USB clamp lamps that I found on Amazon and they work fantastic. I generally use two of them and just sort of aim it towards the model so you can see nice and clearly. And now I have heaps of lighting in the space where I'm going to work. You'll also want some sprue cutters. The ones that come with Games Workshop kits are not too bad, but uh, the better quality ones you have, the easier they'll be to work with. Citadel do have a more upmarket version. Um, they're better, but still not perfect. The pair I really like is this one here from Scale Model Supplies. They work really well and have a pretty small cutting area, so they tend to do a better job than some of the bigger ones. You also want a way to clean up your mold lines. So this is just a small mold line tool that comes with um, many Games Workshop kits. This works pretty well. I like to use this one here, which came with a Vallejo kit, just because it has a nice sturdy handle and um, yeah, works just as well. For anything that the mold line remover can't fix, so you'll want a sharp knife, any brand will do. And the other essential is some glue. I did a whole video on glue not long ago, so uh, be sure to check that out. It's only five minutes long, it'll tell you exactly what glue you need for which situations. Now let's go over some of the more optional things in the building process um, that you may want to get, but uh, are not essential. I have these really small uh, work zone clamps. Uh, which came from LD. LD is sort of a convenience slash hardware slash anything else store that's in Australia and I think UK. I use these all the time when building tanks and other big models just to hold everything together while the glue dries. Any sort of clamp will work for this. I just like these ones because they're really good size to work with those sort of models. Next thing I have a small uh, hand drill and some drill bits. Now these ones are from Army Painter. Really useful if you like to drill out the barrels on your weapons. Also good for pinning models. I normally use this and um, cut off pieces of paper clip and that works really well to pin models. One thing I find amusing uh, from browsing forums and whatever else is that most people that have one of these don't know that the end comes off and there's some extra chucks inside. So handy thing to know. Okay, now moving on to the priming process. So I really like the range from Vallejo. They have some really good surface primers, uh, which can either be brushed on or fired for an airbrush. Now, if you want to know what to buy for airbrushing, which is very much optional, uh, I did a video a while ago explaining what you need to purchase in order to get started with that. So that's sort of a similar video to this, but only for airbrushing. So I'll leave a link to that uh, as well for all the details about airbrushing. Okay, so as a Vallejo, in the Citadel range, you have a whole heap of spray primers. With these, you do need to be a bit careful of the humidity and heat. Um, if you're using it outside of that range, you can get some very mixed results. Citadel does have brush-on primers as well, so to any of those little paints that have base on the name of them, uh, they can be used as a primer. For brush on priming, uh, my go-to is this Scale Model Supply number 4 Kalinsky Stable Brush. It's thick enough that you can load it up with heaps of paint and um, apply it to the model. I've been using this since I first started uh, painting again two years ago and the brush is still good. Still does a great job for priming. Okay, so moving on to the actual painting process. There's actually very few of these brushes that I use and I have a number of spares. So um, again, that scale model supply uh, number four 
is fantastic for covering big areas. My go-to brushes for detail work though are these uh, Vallejo synthetic uh, brushes. So this is a number one. I got it in I think the Vallejo painter set. Uh, so that comes with three brushes, all fairly small and detailed in size. But really it's only those two brushes that I use the most. For dry brushing, I um, actually just use some no-name makeup brushes. These work fantastic, they're very soft um, and will definitely do the job. I also have a 005 Micron pen here. These are great if you want to put some text on like um, penitent seals or something along those lines. Anything where you want to do some small detail. Also really good for dotting eyes. So yeah, that's worth checking out. And this paint rack itself was just something I found in one of the dollar stores nearby. And yeah, it's just very useful for holding all my brushes. Moving on, I use a Citadel water pot. So I started with just using a normal cup of water. However, this sort of has like a washboard effect inside and it's really good at cleaning out the brushes. So uh, definitely worth the upgrade for something that's very simple and small. You'll also want some kind of pellet. So this is the one that I've been using for the last two years. Um, whenever it gets messy like this, you can just sort of spray it over with some spray paint and then it's sort of fresh to use again. You can get much bigger palettes, but I like to keep it fairly small so it's not taking up much room on my, my desk and it's easy to just get the paint and put it on the model. Another option is a wet palette. Uh, this one here I haven't actually used yet. I'm going to do a sort of a review on it sometime soon. So um, keep an eye out for that. This is the one that I've used in the past. It kind of takes up too much space on the desk though, which is uh, why I wanted to go with this one. But these are sort of optional as well. You might want to get started with uh, just a regular simple palette. I think those last ones I showed you were only about 50 cents each, so they're very cheap. And then work up to something like this when you want to try something new. Now also in the optional but highly recommended space is a vortex mixer. So this here is always on my desk and it just makes it so much easier to mix your paints. So whenever you get a new paint out to use, you just stick it on top and it's all mixed in and ready to go. Okay, so that's it for the painting process. Uh, for doing decals, I normally just have a uh, small lid that I can pour water into, some tweezers to easily pick up, pick up the decal, and some cotton tips. If you want to know more about my process for doing decals, I did a video on that a while ago and I'll link that down below. Okay, now on to basing. Um, I really like these Vallejo ground textures. They're kind of a paste that's uh, really easy to apply to the base of your models. To do that I use uh, this rubber tips brush. Just makes it easy to spread the paste and it's also very easy to clean. I've used regular brushes before and it just sort of gets stuck in the bristles and you never really get it clean again. So using something like this works a lot better. I also have this bucket of ground tops. All different brands uh, and I just have a whole bunch of them. And uh, whenever I need to do some basing, I just see if there's anything that I think will fit good with the theme and I throw a few of these on. Now on to protecting your models. Uh, you may want to use a varnish at the end of the process. Uh, Citadel have two very good options, uh, either brushed on or through airbrush, uh, which is technical storm shield and art coat. I also like the Vallejo option, so the satin matte and gloss varnish. Now one thing I want to warn you against is Citadel Monitorum Varnish, which uh, comes in a spray can. It may seem like it'll be a very simple and easy way to varnish your miniatures, but I've had very lousy results with it. Thus the label on the can. It seems to dull down the colours of anything that it goes over, and if you have anything clear like a window, then it's not going to be very clear afterwards. So definitely stay away from this product if you can. Now for miniature storage. So I've got these uh, very useful boxes, that's the name of the brand. The shorter ones are a great size for most miniatures, however if you have tanks and larger models, then they also come in this bigger size. Now in the bottom of each of these boxes I've glued some A4 magnetic sheeting, and under each miniature there's a small 3x6mm magnet and that's what holds it to the sheeting. So if I lift up one of these models you can see the uh, magnet on the bottom there. 
You obviously don't need to go to that extent of uh, magnetizing all your miniatures, but if you're moving around a lot, uh, I think this is the nicest way to do it. I've seen those cases that have um, like soft inserts and that, and uh, over time that just really wears on the paint job. Whereas this will effectively hold the miniatures in place uh, without damaging them over time. So definitely worth checking out. Also on the topic of storage, if you don't have a dedicated painting space and you're needing to pack it away every time or you like to take your painting space outside or to a friend's place, then I found the best way of transportation is toolboxes. In particular, I use the DeWalt um, stacker system. They just have a lot of great uh, little storage features, uh, including removable sections and trays. Also with the stacking options, you can add and remove as many of these um, pieces as you want. And they can all stack neatly on one case uh, when you're wanting to store them away. So yeah, that's just a quick little recommendation. Uh, I found these to be very useful. Uh, obviously now I have a more permanent setup, but I still like to go outside on nice days and do some building or painting outside. Okay, so I think that's about it for this video. If there's a particular tool or item that um, you really like that you didn't see me talk about here, uh, please leave me a recommendation. I'm always looking out to find new things, so that'd be great. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like these sort of videos, and take care, and I'll see you next time.